Welcome into K State Online. Mason Voth and Drew Galloway here with you. K State, brutal showing for them in Houston. Uh, Drew probably thankful that the flight situation ended up not working out and didn't have to go down for that because K State falls 74 to 52 to Houston. It wasn't even that close, if we're being honest. Uh, this was an all around awful performance for K State. They started the game by letting Houston go on an 11 0 run. They were down by 20 at halftime, and you get those other nine points to get to 20 because they let Houston finish the half on a 9-0 run. That comes after Arthur Kaluma had hit a three to cut it to 11 points, and then they allowed back-to-back -back Houston threes, and it just it was an all-around mess for K-State. Problems that we thought could be problems for them, they were there. They turned the ball over 18 times. Houston ends up getting 25 points off of K-State turnovers. Then Houston gets 15 points off second chance buckets because the Cougars had 15 offensive rebounds in the game. Uh, and overall, they out rebounded K State 38 to 28. So K State loose with the ball, and then they can't grab the ball when they have an opportunity to get one. It leads to a lot of bad outcomes, which is thankfully just a 22 point loss to Houston because it, it could have been worse and it feels a lot worse, especially considering this team has now lost two straight and you've, you've got a ranked team in Oklahoma coming into Manhattan on Tuesday. It, it also just feels bad because you played two games this week and you didn't lead at all on either of them. And, and for most of today, you were non-competitive. I, I wrote an instant takeaways like it was a better second half, but it, it didn't matter. Houston was up so much that it the second half you, you lose by two points, but you, you lost by 22. And, and it's another one where you just worry about what this team is like on the road because this was another just brutal start on the road. And that's now they're they've in Big 12 play, they've or they've been trailing at halftime in three of the four games. And, and the game that they actually led was the Texas Tech game where they were really bad in the first six minutes. So you, you worry about bad starts and, and you also just worry about fouls adding up. I mean, I, I didn't realize this until looking at the stats right now, Houston shot 34 free throws and, and it's not like K-State was really fouling like a ton. They had 21 fouls, but when you have 21 fouls and it, they shoot 34 free throws, it means that almost all of your fouls came on a shot. And it just felt like every time that they had a chance or a sliver of maybe cutting into the game, either case they would turn the ball over or they'd be on defense and Houston would miss a shot and Houston would get the offensive rebound. And it felt like, I don't know if you felt like this, but it felt like every single three that Houston made was on a second chance. No, that it, it did feel that way, and K-State seemed, obviously, to give up a lot of those, and there were multiple possessions where K-State ended up giving up two offensive rebounds, and the possession just kept going. It, th this is just a problem for this team. They're, they're not a good defensive rebounding team. They are causing themselves more headaches than what they need to be, and they just... I mean, at the end of the day, and we've known this, but it, it's, it's clear K-State just doesn't have enough talent to be able to hang with these guys and the way to make up for talent is by being smart and having some energy and some hustle and k-state seems to have guys that lack that at times so if you you go out and you're not going to get an all-time game from your top three players in kaluma C carter and perry then you need to have guys be good elsewhere and you just don't get that today i mean if, if you look around at, at how it works out david gasson again he only played 16 minutes, and some of these guys didn't play that much because of uh, the, the situation of the game. He had three rebounds today. Uh, that cannot happen. Uh, Will McNair got to pad the stats because he he played uh, quite a bit in, in mop-up time, but he ended up with nine boards. Um, he was bad early on, though. He couldn't move. He hurts his team defensively. They went to Jarrell Colbert. Then you immediately realize you can't play Jarrell Colbert because he can't hang on to the basketball. And he hurts you in a bunch of different ways. And that's something that's really holding this team back right now is that these guys are playing to a level to where it isn't, it's not like you can't mask it. They are playing bad enough for it to make an obvious impact in a negative way to how you're trying to win basketball games. I mean, this is, I don't, I mean, it, the, for sure the last four games now, 
where Will McNair has been on the floor early in the game and you've got he 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 cannot play right now. You cannot have him out there. Now in some of the games, he did get it figured out later on and did help them, like Baylor, but for the first 30 minutes of that game, it was clear that Jarrell Colbert needed to be out there because Will McNair was not being helpful. He had struggles against Oklahoma State and then obviously Iowa State and today against Houston, it it, it came in itself. Like it's tough because a lot of these guys are being put in positions to do things that they're not really capable of and that they shouldn't be asked to do because K-State is short on their roster, because Quez Glover has a season-ending injury, and because Naquan Tomlin you thought was going to be on your team, he's not. So it it's frustrating, and this team also struck out trying to land transfers and do stuff in the offseason like you wanted to, and Tyler Perry hasn't panned out the way that you thought he might. But – so it, you want to shift blame and, and get frustrated about that. It's tough to do. Like I, I find myself drifting there, but you have to have some reality with it. And so K-State just has to figure out with the situation they have, how are you going to make it work? How are you going to be competitive? Because they do have a talented enough guys and a good enough team. And obviously what we think is a pretty great coach to make this team be an NCAA tournament team and to not be, you know, getting housed on the road like this. I get Houston's a really good team, but K-State made it really easy for Houston to be a really good team today. And they're going to have to get things figured out because, you know, the Iowa State game went down in a weird way, but K-State battled and and you feel better. Maybe not better, but you don't feel bad walking out of that game. You wish you would have had it. It's a second straight road game that you blew an opportunity to win because you were in it late. But, Based on how that started, they fought back and they showed that they could fight. And you, okay, okay, this changes the mood totally going into that Oklahoma game now on Tuesday. And next week is a massive week for K State. They have to go two and zero if if they want people to continue to believe that they are indeed an, an NCAA tournament team. Because if not, then the conversation starts shifting to other directions. Yeah, and it, it's kind of like we talked about on Sunday, like the the margin of error is so thin if you can't steal a road game that you have to go undefeated at home and try and steal a game on the road or two. They've already stolen the West Virginia game. They've defended home court pretty well. And it just turns the table to just a massive game on Tuesday because the opportunity is still there to be six and three to start the big 12, Mm -hmm. which I think that we would all take it. But now, again, like like I said, like your margin of error is just so much thinner because you couldn't finish at Texas Tech, because you couldn't get over the hump at Iowa State, because you weren't very competitive today. Like the, when you're a bubble team and this team is still probably on the bubble, you need to be able to string something together. And, and that's why. You know, we kind of said that we hate doing that on January 16th, calling the Baylor game a must win. But you say the same thing January 30th. You don't want it to be a must win, but you have to beat Oklahoma if you're going to be a tournament team. And then you have to turn around and beat Oklahoma State. And to be honest, even with potentially stealing one next Saturday, you still kind of feel like you need to beat KU at home. So you, you at yeah. least you at least need to go two and one in these next three games. And that's all set up by not winning this week. And, and like K-State wasn't favored in either game. They were a pretty heavy underdog today. It's like it was expected to go 0-2, but now it's more about how do you respond to that and how do you move forward? Yeah, and it was just, I mean, it truly was a no-show. Uh, and I, I don't know if it was just, you know, everything taking a toll on this team. Uh, these, it, this is a tough two game week to be on the road the entire time, uh, and, you know, face probably two of the more physical teams in the league, uh, two teams that are really good at what K-State is really bad at. So it's easier for K-State to get exposed in those situations. Uh, so there, there is an element to that and everything that goes on, but you talk about like, Oh, you must win on Tuesday. Kansas probably must win two at home because this team's only road win right now is at West Virginia, who's the second worst team in this league right now. And until this team is able to get over the hump and win a road game, 
starting to think that they're not going to be able to do it because they are shooting themselves in the foot, at least in two of the first two losses, Tech and Iowa State. And then against Houston, you didn't give yourself a chance at all, really. And when you started to kind of claw back and maybe think, hey, let's get this to single digits by halftime, you let Houston just punch you in the mouth and go on a pretty quick and easy run. And that that just can't happen. So K-State's got to be better. Uh, even if they win that game against Oklahoma State on the road, I'm, I'm not counting that as them showing to me that they can win a road game. That's them showing that they're just not going to lay a turd against a bad team. But you're going to have to figure out at some point, can you win in Provo? Can you win in Austin? Can you win in Cincinnati? One of those, because um, they're not winning in Allen Fieldhouse. We know that. So you got to figure something out here, and you got to take care of business at home in the meantime because it's not like the home schedule is – crazy Any easy easier. to finish uh, finish things off because of the the remaining home games four of them are against ranked teams in OU, KU, BYU and Iowa State and the other ones are you know West Virginia whatever blah but the other ones against TCU who very well could be in the top 25 and certainly has played like the best team in this league at different points in the season so K-State's got to get figured out uh, I, I just don't know in some ways, it's his job. I get it. I feel bad for Jerome Tang because uh, this would be a very frustrating team to coach, and I do think that he's doing pretty darn close to as good of a job as he can. But it's his job to make this team play better, and so in turn, he has to find a way to do better, and I know that's asking a lot, and that may seem unfair, uh, but that's what this team has to figure out because – if not, then it's going to be probably a, a, a pretty disappointing dip in year two of Jerome Tang at K-State. Yeah, I mean, this week just shows that you're just kind of fighting to get into the tournament still. And, and I do think that this team plays good enough in Bramlage outside of the Nebraska game to win most of the home games. The, the hard part, and it's the thing that I've just been harping on, is like it's so hard to win on the road that dropping that game to Texas Tech right now just feels like a killer. Yeah. Because if they were two and two on the road right now and five and two overall in Big 12, nobody's probably as worried about what's going, what's going on with the team going forward. And even like no showing and getting crushed by Houston, you still probably feel a little bit better if you had the Texas Tech win. But like the the path is just so narrow when you can't when you can't steal on on the road. And now you look forward, and I mean we, we've said at different times that we think Oklahoma is a little fraudulent, but that's still right now is a top fifteen team, and, and it's going to be a battle and. Every game, because of how K-State is constructed and how K-State has had to play, is a, is probably going to be a close game. So they need to find ways to make plays down the stretch. And the hardest part for me about this game is that it just, it K-State was just never in it. Yeah. Well, and you talk about Oklahoma. Uh, we'll, we'll see how things finish up. Obviously, they're in the first half of their game with Texas Tech right now, but there's a realistic chance that Oklahoma also has an 0-2 week, uh, and they're just as desperate, and they're looking at it and saying, if we want to be a tournament team, we have to get road wins like this game that we're playing against K-State. Uh, and obviously their week would be much more disastrous because you would lose both games at home, uh, one against a team in Texas that kind of seemed like they might be dead in the water. So the – it's going to be massive on Tuesday night. We'll talk more about it tomorrow on the KSO Sunday show. Myself, Drew Galloway, KSU underscore fan. That will be up sometime early afternoon tomorrow. So be sure to be on the lookout for that as uh, we give our full thoughts on today's game, the week that was for K-State, and uh, a lot more on the Spiowa State stuff going on up in Ames uh, to at least discuss it and maybe see uh, what else we can figure out and and – make sense of what went on up there. Uh, and then also we'll talk about everything else going on in the big 12 and uh, fan as always more level headed than us. Maybe he uh, is, is less panicky or stern about what he thinks this team needs to do, but it was a crappy performance today. And when you have crappy performances like that, 
and you're going to have to to make up for it somewhere in case state has to do that next week. Got to be a 2 and 0 week in my books against Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. So that will do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Head over to kstateonline.com for your full post-game coverage of the Cats and the Cougs over at On3 is where you can find us. So we are out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.